Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here. You'll get notifications for and hit the bell too. You'll get notifications for this series and others. This is the multivariable calculus series. We're in chapter zero, differential equations. Specifically, this will be the last section we do in a multivariable calculus course. We just wanted the basic idea of what differential equations are. So we're going to do second order differential equations in 0.4. And this lecture specifically, we're going to deal with all the terminology of this horrible sentence. Second order constant coefficient linear homogeneous ordinary differential equations and some examples. Let's do that. All right, to start our investigation into second order differential equations, we're just going to give a brief introduction in this series again. Therefore, what are we going to do? Recall first what's the first we want a uh, linear. We're not going to talk about linear second order differential equations. We're going to talk about linear ones for now. Remember, what is second or you can look at one of the previous videos and in there we give the definition of linear and nonlinear ODE and the general form is given by a of x times y double prime plus b of x times y prime plus c of x times y equals some other function f of x. That's the general form. We're going to start with two major assumptions. Those assumptions the first one is that all the coefficients are all just constant real numbers. They're not functions of x. And therefore, we would get a, an equation that looks like this, where we are going to call this a constant coefficient second order differential equation. The second assumption we're going to have is that we call the equation homogeneous. What that means is the right hand side, f of x, is identically the zero function. This gives us a final equation that we're going to study here in this series called a second order constant coefficient homogeneous linear differential equation. Let's do that. Okay, we have second order linear constant coefficient homogeneous differential equations. It has this form I've color coded for you hopefully so you can piece out what's happening quickly for a second. The orange says second order. That means the highest derivative appearing is the second derivative. That's the order. Linear is the form of the equation. Every term is either a function of just x or a function of x times uh, exactly one of y or one of its derivatives. Constant coefficient says those functions that we're going to say in that linear in those linear scenarios, those functions are all going to be constants or real numbers. Homogeneous says that the right-hand side function f of x is zero. And then differential equation means we have y and its derivatives appearing. This is a second order linear constant coefficient homogeneous differential equation. Now let's try to solve this hot mess. What do we mean by solutions? We want to find the most general solution y which satisfies this equation. What we're cleverly going to do is this. We're going to assume the solution is of the form y of x equals e to the rx, where r is some positive real number. What does that do for us? We now plug this guess into this equation and see what happens. First of all, y prime of x, taking the derivative of this, is going to be r e to the rx, and y double prime of x is going to be r squared times e to the rx taking the derivative twice. Plugging those values in here now, we're going to get a y prime prime is r squared e to the rx plus b y prime is r e to the rx plus cy, which is e to the rx equals zero. We can factor e to the r of x out of each term. This gives me e to the rx factored out, a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero. Coincidentally, e to the rx is strictly greater than zero. And that will tell us that, what can we do with this? This tells us that this has to be zero. And this is what we're going to call our auxiliary equation. Let's move that up and we'll give this definition. All right. Now that we moved it to the top, we now have that essentially what we're saying here, long story short, 
this guess y of x equals e to the rx is a solution to this differential equation if and only if r satisfies this characteristic equation. And how do we solve that? This is a quadratic, so we see that this says r1, 2, the two solutions are going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a using the quadratic formula. All right, quickly before we start, let's do the cases for, let's remind us of the quadratic equation. There's three cases of the roots for the quadratic equation. Case one is there can be two distinct real roots. If the discriminant we call this b squared minus 4ac, the thing underneath the square root, if that's positive, we get two distinct real roots, these guys. If there's a discriminant is exactly equal to zero, we get two double real roots, both equal to negative b over 2a. When the discriminant d is less than zero, we usually we say that there's no real roots, but what we mean is there are roots, that are, but they aren't real. There's two complex conjugates, and they're given by this hot mass. Basically, I factored out a negative and then took out the square root of negative one, which is i. So there's two complex. They have a real part and an imaginary part. We won't discuss this in this class. I'll just show you in the cases when you get these, how to find the general solution in all three cases. Now let's give the general equation to second order constant coefficient linear homogeneous differential equations. Good, now we state the theorem and we'll do some examples. What the theorem says is consider a second order constant coefficient linear homogeneous differential equations with initial conditions, these guys. Then there's a unique general solution given by the cases of whether our quadratic auxiliary or characteristic equation a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero, whether that has two distinct real roots, a double real root, or two complex conjugates. If we have two distinct real roots, then our general solution is a constant times e to the r one x plus a const, another constant times e to the r2 of x. If we have two double real roots, we have to start talking about linear independence and this kind of stuff and linear algebra type stuff. So to make sure that these solutions, the general solution is linearly independent, essentially what we have to do is, without showing you, is multiply by x in the second one. If we get a double root, we could combine the coefficients if the x wasn't there. So to make this linearly independent, the most general solution is c1 e to the rx plus c2x times e to the rx. Don't worry about this. These are You memorize this and we'll do some examples. I'll show you how to do each case. For the last case, I will focus less on this, especially on exams and that. I will give you mostly the first two cases. That's why they're in blue. The red one is the complex case. If you get two complex conjugates, alpha plus or minus beta i, then our solution is this hot mess, e to the alpha x, and then in brackets, c1 cos beta x plus c2 sine beta x. These are the three general solutions, depending on whether the characteristic equation has two real roots, a double real root, or two complex conjugates. Let's do some examples. Example one. We want to solve y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y equals 0, and then we have some initial conditions. The initial conditions essentially are going to allow us to find the uh, specific constants in the general solution. We'll do that at the end in just a second. Always what we're doing is we're guessing that we have y is e to the rx, then plugging that in there. If you have to every time, or just remembering, we have our auxiliary equation is a b c so we're going to have r squared plus 4r plus 4 equals 0 is our characteristic equation from that we solve that so we have that this is going to be r plus 2 times r plus 2 equals 0 or r plus 2 squared equals 0 and what does that say the discriminant is 0 so we have two double roots we have a double real root r1 equals r2 equals negative 2. Our general solution is going to be y of x is going to be c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2 times x e to the negative 2x. 
this is the general solution to this ODE. We almost forgot, just a second. I've got my cat looking in the window at me right now too, but she's distracting me. I'm using the cat as an excuse. Don't forget to do your initial conditions. What did that tell us? We saw that our general solution was y of x equals c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2x e to the negative 2x. We have, so y prime of x is going to be negative 2c1 e to the negative 2x minus 2c2x e to the negative 2x plus c2 e to the negative 2x. Therefore, what do I do? That says y of 0 is going to equal 1, which is I put 0 into y of x, so that's going to give me c1 plus 0 times c2. So that immediately tells me c1 is a 1. And then from the second one, y prime of 0 is 3, which gives me negative 2c1 minus 2 times c2 times 0, which is gone, plus c2. We know that c1 is a 1. That tells me that 3 is equal to negative 2 times 1 plus c2 which tells me that, move this to the other side, C2 is 5. Now we have the specific unique solution for the unique constants. Y of x is equal to C1, which was 1, e to the negative 2x, plus C2, which is 5x, e to the negative 2x. This is the general solution, number 2. Okay, example two, we want to solve y prime prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals 0. We immediately get the auxiliary equation. That gives us r squared minus 3r plus 2 equals 0. If and only if r minus 2 times r minus 1 equals 0. That gives us two distinct real roots. r1 is 2 and r2 is 1. This gives us a general solution y of x is c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the x. This one didn't give us initial conditions, so we're done. We can leave it with the constants not being found. As the last one, again, I, I'll do another video where I just do a bunch of ordinary differential equations as the last one to wrap up this chapter. But for now, I'm going to just stick to the first two cases of whether we have two distinct roots or a double real root. We won't worry too much about the complex conjugate case, so you don't have to worry about complex numbers in this course anyways. Let's solve this ODE. What do we get? Our characteristic equation is immediately r squared minus r minus 1 equals 0. From this, now we need to find out what the roots are. We're going to use the quadratic equation, or I will just complete the square for us. What does that give us? That gives us b is negative 1, so over 2 is 1 half. So b over 2 squared is 1 quarter. This gives me r squared minus r plus 1 quarter minus 1 quarter minus 1 equals 0. This is now a completed square. This completed square is what? If and only if this is r minus 1 half squared minus, I need a common denominator, so I multiply by 4 and 4, which gives me 5 over 4 equals 0. I've now completed the square. I solve for r. This gives me r minus 1 half squared equals 5 over 4. This gives me r minus 1 half equals plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And that will tell me that r is equal to 1 half plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Or we have two distinct real roots. Those distinct real roots are r1 equals 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, which happens to be the golden ratio the golden rectangle. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's one of our roots. Don't worry about it. And the second root is r2 equals 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. What does that give us? Finding the roots, we have the general solution y of x is equal to c1 e to the 1 plus root 5 over 2 x plus c2 e to the 1 minus root 5 over 2x. This is the general solution.
please subscribe right here you'll get and hit the notification bell you'll get notifications for this series and many others on our channel i'm the tutor wizard see you next time